When we look at the book of Revelation at the end of time, there, there's controversy on how to translate what happens at the end. Some people think that the reign of Christ on earth is just a figurative thing, and that it's really talking about the establishment of his kingdom for all time. But Zechariah 14 is exactly the reason why I believe we're going to have an earthly reign of Jesus for that thousand years before the full reign of Christ that happens forevermore. And we're going to talk about that today as we finish our study in Zechariah. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. And if it's been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we encourage you to uh, subscribe to our channel, click the bell for notifications so that you can receive a devotional much like this one, Monday through Saturday, where we read just a little bit of the scripture and pull one thing from it to help us be more like Jesus. And so let's jump into Zechariah 14 and start to understand why I think this is pointing to more like a millennial reign of Jesus rather than some sort of figurative thing uh, that, that Revelation might be talking about. Let's look at it together as we read. Behold, a day is coming for the Lord when the spoil taken from you will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses plundered, and the women raped. Half the city shall go out into exile, but the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights on the day of battle. And on that day his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives that lies before Jerusalem on the east, and on the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west by a very wide valley, so that one half of the mount shall, be, shall move northward, and the other half shall move southward. And you shall flee to the valley of my mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach to Azal. And you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the day of Uzziah, king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come, and all the holy ones with him. On that day there shall be no light, cold, or frost, and there shall be a unique day, which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night, but at evening time there shall be light. And on that day living water shall flow out of Jerusalem, half of them to the eastern sea and half of them to the western sea, and it shall continue in summer as in winter. And the Lord will be king over all the earth, and on that day the Lord will be one and his name one. The whole land shall be turned into a plain from Geba to Rimon, south of Jerusalem. But Jerusalem shall remain aloft on its site from the gate of Benjamin to the place of the former gate to the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananel to the king's wine presses. And it shall be inhabited, for there shall never be again a, a decree of utter destruction. Jerusalem shall dwell in security." And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the peoples that wage war against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they are standing on their feet. Their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongues will rot in their mouths. And on that day a great panic from the Lord shall fall on them, so that each will seize the hand of another, and the hand of the one will be raised against the hand of the other. Even Judah will fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be collected, gold, silver, and garments in great abundance. And a plague like this plague shall fall on the horses, the mules, the camels, the donkeys, and whatever beasts may be in those camps." Then everyone who survives of all the nations that have come against Jerusalem shall go up year after year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, to keep the feast of booze. And if any of the families of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, there will be no rain on them. And if the family of Egypt does not go up and present themselves, then on them there shall be no rain. There shall be the plague with which the Lord afflicts the nations that do not go up to keep the feast of booze. This shall be the punishment to Egypt and the punishment to all the nations that do not go up to keep the Feast of Booths. And on that day there shall be inscribed on the bells of the horses, Holy to the Lord. And on the pots in the house of the Lord shall be as the bowls before the altar. And every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holy to the Lord of hosts, so that all who sacrifice may come and take of them and boil the meat of sacrifice in them. And there shall no longer be a traitor in the house of the Lord of hosts on that day. And so 
as, as we look at this passage, we see that the nations will fight against Jerusalem one last time before the Lord reveals himself, right? And the Lord will arrive like a day like no other, right? Without a nighttime, without a daytime, until evening there's going to be light. And I believe what we're seeing here is Jesus establishing his earthly thousand-year reign. And he talks about what it's going to be like because we know that at the end of those thousand years, nations are going to gather, they're going to fight against him. In other words, it's not perfection as of yet, even in this earthly reign of Jesus. And it sounds very much like the description of God's reign that's given in Psalm 2. Let's look at Psalm 2 together and, and talk about that. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. And so what we see here, I truly believe, is very much like the earthly ministry, the earthly reign of Jesus, where the the kings and the kingdoms are going to be dependent upon Jesus for their reigns and the honor of him. And some of them, as we will see, will not honor him toward the very end, because they'll be Satan's going to be loosed and rouse all those people against Jesus, which we read in in the last couple of chapters together. But this right here, we're looking at this reign of Jesus that looks much different than what were revealed in Revelation of what the heavenly city is going to be like. We see a different reign. We see an earthly king for a thousand years, and blessed is he who puts his trust in the Lord and puts his trust in this one that God has placed as king. It's, it's a time of testing, uh, of final testing, if you will. And so the people of Israel who are, dur- who are there during that time are going to be under the kingship of the one that they've always looked toward as their Messiah, as their earthly Messiah. That's what Jesus is going to fulfill during that time. And that kind of ends our, our time in Zechariah. But hopefully you guys get to see the gloriousness of the kingdom in which God is going to bring forth. And he's going to bring forth all the promises found in Jesus, both in the earthly kingdom and in the heavenly one that he promises after after the judgment seat of Christ takes place. So I hope that encourages you to keep the faith, knowing what's going to happen here at the end. God bless you, and we will talk with you again uh, when we start this again on Monday.